We will now have a speech by Garnett Genuis, MP, Shadow Minister for International Development and Human Rights. Well, thank you so much. It's a real pleasure for me to be able to be uh, with you today. Uh, I want to thank the Canadian Tamil Congress for organizing this event. Uh, and uh, I'm sure, as others have said, it would be lovely to be together in person. I, I miss all of you, those of you who, who know me. I, I miss the opportunity to interact with you in person. Uh, and throughout this pandemic, I've been thinking, you know, in a couple of weeks, I'll go to Toronto. Maybe in maybe next month, everything will be will be better and hoping. And uh, nonetheless, I, I want to salute the organizers for the adaptation that's happening. Uh, it is great that I can be uh, in my in my home here in Alberta and yet connecting with you. Uh, many of you in Toronto, and I'm sure there are people uh, all across the country and perhaps even in other parts of the world that can uh, participate in this. Uh, we are so blessed to have uh, a very large Tamil community in Canada. Uh, the Tamil community uh, is leading in so many areas, uh, yes, in human rights advocacy, yes, in politics, but also uh, in business, uh, in healthcare. Uh, I want to salute the the frontline workers from the the Tamil community and other communities as well uh, that have uh, given so much to Canada during this this pandemic, and uh, in 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 arts and culture in so many sectors uh, we see the leadership of the Tamil community, and I want to recognize that and and salute that. Uh, I I have the honor of bringing you greetings on behalf of the leader of the Conservative Party, Aaron O'Toole. Uh, and also uh, just sharing a little bit with you about uh, the our, our reflections on the current uh, situation of human rights in Sri Lanka. I, I serve as the Shadow Minister for International Development and Human Rights. Uh, Sri Lanka is a major recipient of Canadian development assistance. Uh, and of course, it's also uh, an area where there are significant and dramatically escalating human rights concerns that require a strong response. Uh, from our leaders, uh, and uh, I, I know these issues are, are a priority for for uh, many of you. Uh, that many of you are are active and vocal, speaking out about injustices that are happening in your country of origin, uh, and are, uh, are are sounding the alarm and calling for a, a stronger a stronger response. Um, and and uh, I want to encourage you uh, to continue those efforts and also to push harder, to demand more from your elected officials. Because it is easy uh, to come to an event like this and to bring a message of, uh, of solidarity and of goodwill, uh, but there has to be the follow-through. There has to be concrete action items. And that's why we've raised questions in the House of Commons about uh, Magnitsky sanctions, the Magnitsky Act, allows the government to impose targeted sanctions against individuals who are involved in gross violations of human rights. Uh, and uh, there, are, there are many people who were involved at the end of the Civil War, some of whom uh, have senior government positions now. Uh, and we have asked by name about, for instance, uh, Army Chief uh, Savandra, uh, Savandra Shilva. Um, and we've, ra we've raised these issues of Magnitsky sanctions because when people are involved in gross violations of human rights, uh, they need to be held accountable. And under Magnitsky sanctions, they would be prevented from traveling to Canada or moving their money here. And when those sanctions are done in coordination across uh, across a variety of countries, they have a real impact. And most importantly, hopefully they deter uh, further human rights abuses. Uh, so we've, we've talked about and we've asked questions about uh, Ma the Magnitsky Act. Uh, we've also, uh, at the end of the last parliament, we were able to bring forward at the Foreign Affairs Committee and in the House of Commons motions calling on uh, on the United Nations to have an independent investigation into allegations of genocide at the end of the Sri Lankan Civil War. Uh, and so that motion passed, I think, uh, approaching um, approaching two years ago. And it, it is, you know, far beyond time for the government of Canada to take that issue forward at the United Nations, following the adoption of the motion by the House of Commons, and to use our resources at the United Nations to push for that kind of independent investigation. Uh, we, we see as well, uh, 
in terms of the the escalating uh, n negative direction of human rights in Sri Lanka, uh, we see the the destruction of a um, of an important memorial at the University of Jaffna. And I want to recognize, I'm sure he'll speak about it, but uh, Mayor Patrick Brown stepping up and talking about building a memorial here in Canada, in Brampton. Uh, that's the kind of leadership we need in response to these abuses. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll wrap up here, folks. It's, it's such an honor to be able to connect with you in this way. Uh, best wishes to all of you as we celebrate the end of, of Tamil Heritage Month in Thai Pongal. Uh, and I pledge to you my continuing advocacy for concrete action not just words, but concrete action from the government of Canada, making sure that our development assistance always aligns with our values and it is advancing pluralism, tolerance, human rights, uh, pushing harder to hold perpetrators of violence accountable. Uh, and so thank you for your continuing advocacy and your continuing involvement. Uh, God bless. Thank you, thank you, Member of Parliament Garnett Genuise.